Many of you are smart enough to realize that directing your messages via standard social media, email, or even worse, by texting is a really bad idea. For example, you can always assume that someone is reading your email and text. These are all, for example, easily accessible by governments. Texting, for instance, can be accessed via a point-and-click interface by law enforcement. So you've gotten smarter and have used or want to use some sort of messaging app. You ask around and ask what most people are using, and I bet it will be WhatsApp, Telegram, and Signal, depending on where you're located. I also bet you don't understand the problems with some messaging apps. You need to understand the threats to your privacy and cybersecurity, and from that you can determine which app is good for you. In this video, I will raise some thinking points so you can perhaps try some of the messaging apps I suggest here, or dump the messaging app you are currently using. Let's learn a few things about messaging apps. Stay right there. Now, I can't really review every possible encrypted messaging app, so hopefully my analysis here will help you judge for yourself based on the factors I will discuss here. So if there's a particular app you like, just look for the most similar one in my description and you can then see if it is suitable. Generally speaking, many encrypted messaging apps will work just fine for general normie use. So if I don't mention your favorite one, it doesn't mean your app is bad. However, there is one particular one that I would tell you not to use at all, ever. We'll get to that. First, I will discuss the important characteristics of messaging apps, and I will evaluate my short list of apps against these. Generally speaking, the best messaging apps will feature end-to-end -end encryption, and all the options I will mention here will have that. Some apps only partially implement end-to-end -end encryption, meaning one-to-one -one conversations are end-to-end -end encrypted, but other group conversations are not. So this is a big sticking point. You will find that a lot of apps fail when it comes to encrypted group conversations. These types of apps are more of a social media app and not really the best for end-to-end -end encryption. For some users, like business communications, even end-to-end -end encryption isn't necessarily important. Just encryption to prevent outside parties from observing content. And for public groups, obviously encryption is irrelevant because anyone can join public group anyway. So as long as you understand the context where a feature is used, you can see if the end-to-end -end encryption is important in all cases. This is another biggie, obfuscation of your identity. If the app requires some real-world identifier like a phone number, which is true of all the popular messaging apps, then this could be a threat to certain people. The problem with anything that requires a real-world identifier is that someone is able to figure out who's talking with whom. If you match that to the frequency of conversations and timestamps, and then add other metadata like locations, then you might as well forget having an encrypted conversation because the conversation topic will be obvious. On the other hand, if family members are talking to each other, no one cares about the identity being known. So it should be obvious that husbands and wives and children talk to each other. In fact, it would also come as no surprise that the phone numbers are all tied to the same carrier under one account. So having identifiers is not necessarily a negative. It depends on the context. The bad context is in the case of a whistleblower, for example. Certainly having a whistleblower contact a journalist using an app that identifies you with a phone number would cancel out any secrecy and would jeopardize the safety of the whistleblower. Some apps I will introduce you to hide their traffic on the internet by routing the activity through an encrypted network which utilizes onion routing. Onion routing is a popular means of hiding traffic and the most well-known one is Tor. 
apps that funnel their traffic through a hidden network like this make certain that the traffic flow is not observable to the outside. For example, though you may not have visible traffic on the internet, the fact that your device emits traffic directed towards a particular messaging app HQ will identify your use of encrypted messaging. I personally find these to be the most private kind of apps because there is no obvious metadata generated and that makes it superior when there are threats like a state or if the conversation involves whistleblowers. Some messaging apps work with centralized servers created by the app creators. Some have partially centralized servers. Some are completely decentralized with no servers being maintained by the app creators. The disadvantage of a centralized entity is that there is a single point of failure and there's always the possibility that the centralized servers can be examined or even stopped by the state. Most countries have laws that allow them access to servers that are in their jurisdiction. And access could mean confiscation. Some apps are able to work without internet. Now this poses limitations of course since it is inconvenient to use without an internet connection. However, in sophisticated spy tradecraft, you can have conversations within a certain distance and pass messages that would not be observed by anyone else since devices can talk peer to peer, meaning device to device directly with previously negotiated identifiers. I'll give you scenarios where this can be quite important. It is important to know where the messages are stored. If the messages are centralized on some app server, then an authority like a government could copy the messages and then try to decrypt them offline, which could be a potential threat with quantum computers. Just about every app I mention store the messages on the device only after some time. However, just about every app will temporarily store messages on their server for some amount of time until they are retrieved. Usually this kind of threat is mitigated by some other features, but the future threat with this is with quantum computers being used to decrypt messages in the future when quantum computers are finally online. Now let's talk about seven specific apps and how they stack up in relation to the characteristics I just described. I have ranked them from worst to best with the best one saved for last. WhatsApp. This app is a complete fail in my mind. Though this app is end-to-end -end encrypted and the method used was copied from Signal, this app has a lot of problems. I can't imagine what kind of privacy or security you can even imagine getting from an app that knows who you are in real life, knows who you talk to, the frequency, timestamps, length of conversations, and knows your locations and relationships. The problem is that WhatsApp shares its data with Zucking Zuckbook and Instagram. As you know, your real identity is known on Facebook. Your relationships are publicly known and crowd verified. Then on top of this, you're identified by a phone number and likely the same phone number used for two-factor authentication on Instagram and WhatsApp. Your connections to people is very clear. Can you imagine, just as an example, two people having some sort of affair using WhatsApp? Zuck could compile a list of such people and know from time patterns, relationships, locations, and so on that an affair is occurring, and then he could blackmail every one of those people. There is no worse app than this. Also, end-to-end -end encryption only applies to one-on-one -on -one conversations. Imagine having political conversations in some public group on WhatsApp where Zuckbook knows who you really are and compiles a list for some three-letter agency together with public content you've posted. Bad app. Stay away completely. I cannot have anything good to say. Telegram uses phone numbers as well, so that's a negative in some cases. There is no negative with talking with others you already know in real life. For example, families talking on Telegram will be fine since everyone already knows each other's phone numbers. Encryption is limited to one-on-one -on -one conversations. 
So any group talk is to be considered as social media. This app is very popular and because of this has a lot of easy to use features including voice and video conversations. That makes it appealing to more users. In comparison to WhatsApp though, Telegram doesn't have your identity verified and stored like Facebook. So for casual use, this is fine. Signal like Telegram and WhatsApp uses phone numbers. Signal also like these two other popular apps have full features for conversing via video or voice over IP. Again, offering ease of use convenience. These three apps all use a phone number and that makes them all awful for messaging people you don't know. You end up having to reveal phone numbers just to initiate any conversation. The plus with Signal is that Signal has end-to-end -end encryption applied to everything, including group conversations. This means your family conversations are completely safe, even the group ones. I personally use Signal for family messaging. There is no risk there. Phone numbers are already known and the ability to do multimedia with messaging means that users who are not techie in your family can still participate. I have found that the resistance level to Signal as an app is low. In fact, it is a low resistance to all of the three apps I just mentioned and maybe that's why they're ultra popular. However, among the three, Signal has the most encryption and the least amount of metadata. So for light casual use, these are good options, certainly beats email and texting. Threema is the first example I will give of an app that does not use a phone number as an identifier. So this kind of app will be superior to Signal, Telegram, and WhatsApp. Thus, you can be more assured of less metadata from identities and encryption that at the very least will compete well with Signal. Threema is apparently focused on business use and many companies use Threema for business communications. No problem with that at all. The main disadvantage with Threema is that it is completely centralized. So there's that single point of failure and observation. Thus, someone with state level powers could observe metadata coming in and out of Threema servers and make certain deductions about who's talking to whom. This is the main weakness of this platform. This, however, is not a weakness for business use since obviously business people will talk to each other all day. There's no metadata to be worried about and there are no phone numbers. I saw one YouTube channel advertising that its viewers send them videos and tips via Threema and that makes sense. It's a good use and better than using Signal for people you don't know. XMPP is in itself not an app, but a protocol. Many apps support the XMPP protocol and it runs on every OS. This makes it more flexible. XMPP is one of my favorites and if I want absolute control over my messaging, particularly for corporate use, I just maintain my own XMPP server, then I don't have to rely on anyone else for messaging services. Obviously, I don't need to worry about external parties viewing what's going on since I would control who has access to the server. XMPP is great because it is one of those protocols that allow anonymity and account creation. And if you use your own server, you have full control of your data and no metadata. There are public XMPP servers. I maintain one for the community, which is xmpp.brax.live, and it is free to use. XMPP supports end-to-end -end encryption as well, though not on all platforms. Now we move to the sophisticated messaging apps and this is one of the last two I will discuss. Briar is really made for spy tradecraft. This app can be used without any kind of internet connectivity. You can just talk via Bluetooth, for example. As long as you are in range, you can pass messages. You can sync both devices in person to ensure that the identity is certified. Then think of a scenario where two spies are conversing in a restaurant in the open, but far enough that no physical connection is obvious, but their devices are passing messages to each other. There is a way to connect to each other also via the internet, and this connection uses Tor, 
so the traffic is completely encrypted and obfuscated to be untraceable. The problem is that both devices need to be on at the same time, and so such conversations have to be prearranged. In an ultra-secure model, this is not a problem to implement. There's a way to leave messages to each other using a Briar mailbox, which some entity has to maintain. It is open source, so I figure anyone could create their own Briar mailbox. At least that's what I perceive how this is implemented. Briar itself does not maintain any central server, so there is no central database that can be seized by authorities. However, all these special procedures, of course, make this difficult to use for average people. The one that is equally secure but easier to use is my favorite messaging app. Session is my favorite, and I made a separate video about this recently. Session is unique among all the messaging apps because it is a much more sophisticated architecture. I've checked the white papers of these organizations and I've found that the session people really fully recognize the privacy and security problem. Session understands that the issue isn't just encryption, but that equal focus should be placed on metadata and identity protection. But their strategy is complemented by a very usable platform that I really like using. First of all, Session works on every platform, mobile or computer. This alone is a big plus. Session does not have centralized servers for most things. This is because Session relies on third parties who maintain servers in order to earn Oxen cryptocurrency. So the entire infrastructure is decentralized and incentivized. This infrastructure runs their own onion routing network. So similar to Tor, they have encryption over the internet and obfuscates where the traffic comes from. Their version of onion routing is called LokiNet, and it is much faster than Tor in my experience. All traffic from Session goes through LokiNet, so it is impossible for an outsider to gather stats on traffic coming in and out of locations since everything is decentralized, and traffic is actually duplicated on multiple servers called Swarms. Messages like in Briar are completely end-to-end -end encrypted, but as long as there is internet, you will get your messages immediately on session without any special servers needing to be set up. So very low friction to full use. Contacting anyone is easy. For example, I publish my session ID in social media and I can get random messages from anyone. I can read everyone's messages, but I don't have to respond. When I do, then I can start a conversation. The best use of session is with people you don't know. There is no metadata that can be captured that identifies who you're talking to. My session ID is publicly visible, so I don't need to take any further steps. Each person wanting to use session just needs to make their session ID public. The initiation of conversations will be done completely over the Onion network, and there will not be need for any other traffic, even on any other communication method like email or texting. There are some possible centralized traffic though from the multimedia servers that Session has to maintain for video and voice temporarily. And these are being moved to LokiNet at some point, but because of the size of the media, LokiNet is too slow for that currently. Anyway, this is the only weakness that's of concern. The less multimedia you use, the more immune this app is. Highly recommended. Folks, my company creates products that are intended to protect our privacy. We provide phones that have no centralized control and are invisible to big tech. We have various de Google phones in our store. These devices have no Google on them and no Google ID, so they are invisible to Google. Check out our store for various models. We have a VPN service, Bytes VPN, which is a stealth VPN, and that it doesn't scream that you're on a VPN. We do not put thousands of you on a single server. We have Braxmail, which eliminates the metadata from your emails. This means no IP addresses and traces on your email that show where it came from. All these products are on the store on my app, Braxme. Come visit us there. The link is in the description. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.